good afternoon uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, it gives me an immense uh, pleasure to host our show race uh, previews uh, like every uh, friday here we are going to go through the race court of the 12th uh, race uh, meeting uh, to be held tomorrow 3rd june 2023 and by my side our racing consultant uh, from south africa devon habib as usual uh, hi devon how are you doing yes hi Ria. how are you also I'd like to mention and say Good afternoon to the public in South Africa and to the Mauritian public and all over the world, whoever's watching the show. A warm welcome and I hope you enjoy the show with us today. Thank you. Okay. Look, we have some very exciting news. Um, obviously, as you can see at the top, we've got a banner with People's Totes and there's a Facebook page that's now been um, in the process of becoming available internationally. So anyone worldwide can um, obviously take bets in Mauritius. So that's quite exciting. And um, if there's any information, they can obviously contact someone or anyone on uh, www.peoplestote.com or go to the Facebook page, People's Tote, mm -hmm. and uh, query there so that they can open up an account, deposit funds, and start placing bets with us. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a really good uh, place to be playing. There's a tote guarantee. The pools are big. It's going to become world pools now. So, yeah, that's very exciting stuff going forward. And um, they're obviously play a major role in the racing industry i mean that's where the funds come for your stakes and all that from the tote so it gets put back into the game it really is a good um like initiative for the racing so yeah i'm i mean obviously it's available for mauritians they can play on two six zero four seven one zero so i mean if the mauritians want to play they can play that the local number internationals obviously will have to contact us through the the website and take it from there Nice yeah, to know. very exciting. So I'd like to remind our viewers uh, that uh, there are no false race uh, for this uh, meeting and uh, the track reading uh, today at 11 a.m. Uh, was 2.9 moist. So 10 races uh, this Saturday and uh, competitive ones uh, as well, uh, Devon. Yeah, look, for me, I think obviously one or two races are very competitive. It's nice to have a 10 race card. I mean, it feels like we like the july meeting in the mauritius you know the july has 12 races mm -hmm. in south africa so yeah it's quite exciting we've got a big big card ahead of us um but i think obviously my, like race one or race two is quite difficult but then i'm sure there's Open a few races. horses that we can we can have a big bet on and uh i think we can make some money today <laughs> yeah it's very it looks very uh, straightforward some races and not to forget uh, we'll again uh, be celebrating uh, the mother's day since uh, saturday uh, races were cancelled uh, because of the heavy rain yeah look um, obviously it was a really good decision from the clock of the course and uh, the organizers to call off the meeting it wasn't safe the track wasn't in a good condition yeah. very wet very slippery so i think wise um, decision it was a very clever decision yeah and it obviously rather before anything happens and then you know there's someone to blame i think Indeed. it was the safest option to to um call off the meeting it happens all over the world it's not just like it happens yeah, you know exactly. it's all over the world so uh without uh, wasting any more time uh, we start uh, with the race one uh, the msk family cup uh, race uh, which will be run over 990 meters at 0 to 20 with uh, nine uh, runners uh, number one uh, greek myth number two Vortecus, number three, After the Order, number four, uh, De La Vista, number five, uh, Gonna Be All Right, number six, uh, Yoho Miss, uh, number seven, Constitutional, number eight, African Rock, and number nine, Fort McHenry. Stephen, I'll ask you about uh, your choice uh, for the win in this race. Look, this, like we said, this is probably the most toughest race on the day. Um, I was under the impression of tipping a horse at 35 to 1. As my first selection yeah mm -hmm. um just the draw put me off a little bit i'm tipping a horse that's new to this race i think he brings really strong form into this race um from south africa and if he brings that form and just produces those runs in in mauritius it's going to be very very hard to beat this horse uh, number two Varticus. i think he's a smart animal he came from a strong stable that's doing extremely well in south africa is actually fortune and i think uh a really really nice horse going forward i mean his runs behind profit very good run talk not massive run his last run behind far away winter we ran third far away winter these are group one horses Indeed. that are they're running in group one races i mean this isn't a group one field no disrespect to everyone i mean you can see he's working extremely well he's in a really good space um there's not much there's no negatives for me on this also only negative is that it's first run out um 
But he's, he's got in, a good preparation. He's got the draw three. He's in a good space. He's got Donahue up. I think, uh, yeah, there's, it's going to be really hard to beat this horse. I know he's taken on winners and um, horses that have done quite well in the country. But for me, a zero twenty. I don't think he's a zero twenty horse. I think he's a he's above division um, in the sprinter league. So I think he'll be going through the divisions. He's a very nice horse. Bred by Var, very speedy horse. Um, yeah, I'm I'm quite big on number two, Barticus. Two one. And for the blessings. For second, obviously, this was the horse that I. That I said that I liked at big odds. I think he's a really good place value. Really nice horse as well after the order. New apprentice will be on board. Yeah, he's a, I was, that's, there's, there's two negatives with this horse. I mean, we don't know how the princess is going to go, but he's got claim four, 57 up. I think at uh, 35 to 1 or 25 to 1 is a massive, massive odd. You know, even 20 to 1, mm -hmm. massive, massive odds to have a bet on him. Um, even if you play in places, I think he's going to be very big value. And yeah, he's uh, he's a really nice horse going forward. I mean, his his form this season is very decent. I mean, he beat Sergeant York. The form line was Frank. Sergeant York absolutely demolished that field right, last time. Sorts, so yeah. I think um, he's he's definitely got a shot. And uh, what about number four, uh, De La Vista, which will be uh, at his uh, 2023 debut? Uh, does the horse need to lead? Look, um, uh, his best run has been when he led, but. Mm -hmm. He's been a little bit disappointing of late. I mean, after one, I thought the world of this horse. I thought this horse is going to go through the divisions and just win everything. But he's obviously let the connections down. But um, going forward, I think uh, maybe the break could have done him a world of good. Um, he's got an informed jockey, uh, Prentice, mm -hmm. at the moment. I really like the way this Prentice rides. I think he's, yeah, I mean, we, we preached him last yeah. week and he came and showed us how good he is on hidden identity. So. I mean, he's had four outs, three winners, and a short head second. Um, I'm big on him. I think he's a top apprentice, a top jockey. I think he's going to do really well. And yeah, I'm tipping the source to run third. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run in a bigger race, but I just think he needs to come back to his form before we can start getting more confidence on him. And uh, finally, uh, which horse you'd like to choose to complete the quartet? Look, I think number one, Greek myth. Uh, he's got draw one up. He's got a top apprentice of the Tucker on. Um, he's in a good space. He's got good form. His form last season was good. So if he just brings that form back this season, I think he'll be a big runner. He might need the run, hence I'm tipping him to run uh, fourth. But uh, I do think he's a, he's a nice horse going forward. So I'd like to remind our viewers uh, the selections of Devon uh, for the win, number two, Vartacus, uh, and for the placings, uh, number three, after the order, number four, uh, De La Vista, and uh, number one, uh, Greek Myth. Uh, moving on uh, to race two now. The Nufin Celebre Numama Cup, uh, which will be raced over 1400 meters in benchmark uh, 31 uh, with only five uh, runners, uh, number one, Home Force, number two, Hudson River, number three, a lead drummer, number four, a Sun Tiger, and number five, tomorrow's vision. Uh, your pick here, Devon? Yeah, I'm very big on number one, Armed Force. Um, probably one of the bankers on the day. Definitely the start of Derek's good campaign. I think he's got really nice rides for this meeting again. I mean, we made mention of it last time when it ran, when I tipped we him to run second. We can see his last performance. Yeah. I'm forced on the rail with the red and uh, yellow colors. I mean, sitting second on the rail there, I think he's a really, really smart horse. I mean, I made mention of him last time. I tipped him to run second. Mm -hmm. He's formed behind Cousin Casey, six lengths. Cousin Casey's uh, fighting favoritism for the Durban July. So uh, there's no Durban July horses in this race. I think um, he's a really nice horse. I mean, he won a really good race. It was a it was a really big win from him that day i mean he was at big odds that day and uh we found him so i think we've got to carry on tipping him i know it's his second run and i'm not really a fan of the second run but these are all new horses so we also got to understand that they're all gonna have the second run syndrome or first run syndrome you know so we've got to tip the better horse in the race and i think this is probably one of the better horses in the race i think he's a smart smart individual he's won his last two and um Got the draw three, Derek up is is the horse to beat for me. He's probably very short price favorite at like four, five to ten, but yeah, he's definitely the horse that they'll have to beat. And uh, what about the placings? Look for second, um, probably the also the next best form would be tomorrow's vision. Mm -hmm. He ran in open company last time, not against new horses. 
ran a really decent race of running third. Um, I just don't know if he's good enough to beat Armed Force. I think Armed Force is a smashing individual. And uh, number four is Sun Tiger. Look, Sun Tiger's had the run, but it wasn't an experienced run where the jockey was dislodged. So I think... in the Boya trial on Tuesday. Sorry? He put Spader in the okay. Boya trial on Tuesday. Yeah, look, um, obviously he's... Uh, we don't know how good he is yet. I mean, he ran first time out, but the jockey came off. So we're going to have to see if he's any good. That's why I'm tipping him to run uh, third. He's got draw one, and I think... Um, I think he'll be a nice horse going forward. I mean, he's been working well, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him run a nice race. And finally, which horse you will uh, choose to complete the quartet? Look, I'm, I've just got a feeling that uh, we can't leave Zaki stable out. Um, and I feel like uh, Lee Drummer might be a horse that we'll have to watch out for. He's a nice looking horse. Um, it's not much left in the race. There's only five horses. So mm -hmm. I'm going to tip him to run fourth, just over Hudson River. I mean, Hudson River's got the experience, one run behind his back. So maybe that could be the benefit. But I think... Um, Lead drummer could be one for the back end of Cortez. So uh, your selections are for race two, uh, number one, uh, Armed Force uh, for the win and for the placings. Number five, uh, Tomorrow's uh, Vision, uh, followed by number four, Sun Tiger. And finally, number three, Lead Drummer. 100%. We now move on to race three, the traditional uh, Dimanche uh, Fête des Mai uh, Cup, uh, a race uh, which will be run over 1500 meters uh, in benchmark 36 with number one uh, Nichols in, uh, number two Al Asti, number three Jetstream, number four uh, One Day Audi One, and number five uh, James Peter. Your choice for the win here, Devon? Look, for me, this is a two horse race. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very big on One Day or Day One, as always. We've loved this horse from day one, and I think he's going to be a really, really good horse for the season. So yeah, I'm tipping him to win. It's got the draw to Derek up. Um, there's no negatives for me. I think it's he's the horse that they'll have to beat. And uh, for the placings, um, number five. That's the other horse that I think is the biggest danger is uh, definitely James Peter. I mean, we can even go back and uh, watch the rerun of yeah. One Day or Day One. Sorry, um, I think I'm bouncing back to One Day or Day One now. We can watch the rerun. He ran a, a monster race. Should have won. Um, just very unlucky, got beat by us on the day, he's got the silver cap with the purple colours. Also on the day where the jockey probably got right of the century, it was a really, really good ride from him. Mm -hmm. um, he moves up like a winner, I thought it was race over, I was a bit shocked to see him get beat, but By uneasy let's put that as he's a winner without a, a massive penalty, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him winning and winning well. I mean, Chosen Way, they fancy him very strong on the card today, so if Chosen Way was in the race, he'd be 1 to 10. I mean, one day or day one is 8 to 10 is a good price. So I think we can see he just got beat on the line. Um, very unlucky. I think uh, he's definitely the horse that they'll have to beat. And uh, for the places? Look, obviously, James Peter, we spoke about him. I think he's the horse that they'll, left, uh, they'll have to be the biggest danger to the favourite. Mm -hmm. um, he's definitely a nice horse. He's got draw one, Donna, you're up. Look, obviously he's got some positives and uh, I think he is the danger. But is he going to beat one day or day one? I'm not too sure. I think one day or day one is a really smart horse. Obviously he's a nice horse as well. So that's why I make it a two horse race. And number three, uh, Jetstream from uh, Amoa Sildaya Stable. Look, I think Jetstream is also, if you take the form in to account with Sid Lea, on this horse ran six lengths behind it. James Peter ran, uh, what, three and a half lengths behind it. So surely he's got to turn the form around on James Peter and I think it's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I think it will run exactly the same way and I feel like um, James Peter will be in front of Jetstream and Jetstream will run third. And then for fourth, um, I was like Nikhil's in. He's been a bit disappointing in his last two runs, but prior to that, his form was extremely good. So if he can bounce back to his previous form, and he bled as well after his uh, loss out. A hundred percent. So obviously there's uh, there is problems. Um, I can't tip him to win because he's a bleeder and uh, he has his problems. But take that into account. His last three runs uh, prior to, or take his last three runs away. His form is extremely really, uh, extremely good. So I'm gonna tip him because he could show up on the day and run into the back end of quartets. 
So uh, for the win, uh, number four, one day, all day one, and for the placings, number five, uh, James Peter, number three, Jetstream, and number one, uh, Nikis in. Uh, We'll now move on uh, to race 4, the Merci Mama Cup, uh, which will be raced over 1500 meters uh, in benchmark 31 uh, with uh, 7 runners, number 1 Stage World, number 2 Desert Illusion, number 3 Eagles Vision, number 4 uh, Times New Roman, number 5 uh, Kai Goli, number 6 The uh, Jazz Singer and number 7 uh, Secret Circle. Your selections here, Devon. Look, yeah, I mean, we've had a little inside joke on our success, um, Eagles Vision your favorite yeah. it is one of my favorite horses and i think this is his race to win he was very unlucky last time out yeah. you can watch his last run everything went wrong if i don't tip him to win i'm blind he's last on the rail with the purple and silver you can just see as they come for him he's running behind horses like castle of glass and Arlington's revenge who i fancy quite strong on the day so i think i mean we've always liked this horse you can see he's got nowhere to go he's uh, boxed in for running yeah, he was and really when they come into the home straight he gets boxed quite badly there was an objection i thought it was going to be overruled but um obviously it's just very very unlucky you can see he's got nowhere to go he comes in he looks like he's gonna win he's making up the ground and then he gets done really badly by um by the two horses in front of mm -hmm. him um very very unlucky he has to check come out again then he gets done again most unlucky horse in the race, definitely um, the horse that they'll have to beat in this race. And for the placings? For second, a uh, horse like Kalguli. I'm tipping Kalguli to run second. I think uh, his run behind instinctive power was quite impressive. Mm. Um, yeah, he's just got a bad draw on him, but I think uh, he'll be making up some ground and will be running on quite well so i think he could be running onto the back end of quartet as well even for second and third he'll, he'll be a big runner for them and what about number six of the jazz singer for me the jazz singer's form prior to his last run was really really good but when i saw him walking into the parade ring last time i said my goodness that is one of the most beautiful horses i've ever seen you can't look that good and not run well <laughs> so for me, I'm tipping him purely on his looks. I think he's a really smashing individual. Nice horse. I'm tipping him to run third because his last run was very disappointing. But uh, obviously, he's got problems. He hit the rail in the final straight. With Indeed, the poor run. Yeah. I don't think it could have made too much of a difference. Um, I think he just maybe needed it that day. And uh, I think he'll be a really nice horse going forward. The distance is right, 1,500. I think he can bounce back to his uh, previous form. And finally, uh, number seven, uh, second favorite of the race, uh, Secret Circle. Yeah, look, Secret Circle, very nice horse. I mean, he ran second to Moroccan Retreat. He's got really good form prior to that. I think um, he can be running onto the back end of quartets. Uh, he could be even running into the, the minor places, you know, like second and third. I don't see them beating Eagle's Vision, but I think he'll be definitely running on. So, uh, number well, not running on, but I mean running into the into the back end of quarters. Number three, Eagles Vision uh, for the win and for the placings. Uh, number five, uh, Kalgoli. Number six, the Jazz Singer, and number seven, a Secret Circle. Race number five, uh, the Rich Snellishi Memorial Cup uh, with six runners. Number one, uh, Culture Trip. Number two, Baluchi. Number three, Toro Pavo. Number four, uh, Prospector. Number five, uh, Spry. And number six, Instinctive Power. This race uh, will be run over 13.65 meters in benchmark 51. Uh, your choice for the win here, Devon. Like I said last week, like I said the week before, I'm not changing my selections. I don't think I'm going to stop tipping the sauce. I think he's a smart individual. Bank of the month, <laughs> bank of the day. This is the horse that they'll have to beat. Number six, instinctive power. I mean, he's a smashing individual. We can watch his rerun from last time. Nothing beat, nothing came close to beating him. I think the same will happen. He's in front with the blue and uh, blue and red. I think it is. Really, really smashing individual. This horse. I think. I think he's a smart horse. Derrickson gonna be in really good form throughout the day. Hopefully, um, the confidence will be flowing and uh, I don't see much beating him. He's got draw one again, 54 and a half on his back. He'll mm -hmm. put this bed, I mean, this field to sleep. You can see he put them to sleep, yeah. He said, good nights, sweet dreams, sleep tight <laughs> and race over, you know. It was, it was like a, a gallop for him. It was a training, a little training uh, gallop for him. And I think he's a very, very smart horse. 
Impressive win. 100%. I don't see him, them beating him. I think it's a one-horse race for me. I'm very confident. And what about the placings? For second, uh, horse like Bellucci. Obviously, a very smart horse. Um, he's been running against really good horses as well, but he's coming off a long layoff. And uh, I think he might just need to get one more run to be more competitive in a field like this. I think he'll run second or third. But uh, to beat instinct of power, who's in form, who's fit. Um, yeah, look, maybe the in six months' time when he's fit, it might be a different result. But I personally feel with the weight on his back, draw one, fit, it's going to be hard to beat instinct of power. I think this also will be running into the back end or into the second and third positions. And what about uh, last time winner Spryer, who won uh, in a superb way and now uh, drawn number five in the store, so 52 kg. Yeah, it's a smart, uh, smart win from him last time, but also I wasn't really um, impressed with uh, the way the horse was ridden in front, you know. So, yes, everything was in his favor. I mean, we can't make much more mention of how well the jockey rode it that day. It was a really good ride from him. So, Yes, he's a nice horse. Yes, he, he ran well last time. And yes, he did win a good race. It is a step up for him. Um, I just don't know if he's going to be pulling too much. I'm tipping him to run third. I think he might pull a bit too much in the 13.65. And uh, maybe just do too much. You know? it's, a bit, it's a bit tough for him. And number three, uh, Toro Bravo, deception, last outing also. Yeah, look, obviously a nice horse. Um, he's got really good form. He's a five-time winner here in Mauritius. So he has to be one that you have to factor in for the back end of quartets. I think it's going to be hard for him to win, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him running third or fourth. So I'll remind our viewers of your selections uh, in race five. Uh, number six, uh, instinctive power for the win and for the placings. Number two, Balucci. Number five, Spry. And finally, number three, Toro Bravo. We'll now move on uh, to race six, uh, the PTP Mothers Cup, uh, with uh, six runners. Number one, uh, Most of Illusion. Number two, Justine. Number three, Action Park. Number four, uh, Denan. Number five, Sierra. And number six, Swagger Jagger, which will be run in benchmark 51. Uh, Devon, uh, your choice for the win here? Look, obviously for me, I think I was like uh, CA has to be one that we'll have to factor in. He's probably at a decent odds of about five six to one. Um, got draw to got drama up. Vickery stables in hot form. I mean, they had a winner last week. Mm -hmm. He's run behind Thomas Henry was smashing. He's coming down in class. I think um, I think he's also that they'll have to beat. He's a really speedy horse, so I think um, he'll be up there, and uh, it's gonna be hard for them to peg him back, in my opinion. Hmm. And uh, for the placing. For second, I'm tipping horse like Swagger Jagger. I mean, we can see he's in a good space. He's working extremely well. Um, I do like the way this horse is working, and I do think he's a he's a smart horse. Um, his last run was decent. Nice comeback run. A bit too short for him last time out. Uh, now he's going 13.65. He'll definitely be up there. Um, you can see he looks extremely well. He's the hot favorite in the race. Yeah. Everything's got for him. He's just got uh, plus one on him now. So he's got 57 and a half. He's got Dunny up. I wouldn't be surprised to see him winning. Mm -hmm. But um, I think maybe one more run just to prove him fit. And then, yeah, he should be the right or tip next time. And he's moving up in the close and distance as well. 100%. Um, I think he's a nice horse. I mean, when they bumped last time in the 56, where he ran six behind Thomas Henry, CA beat him. And so I'm tipping CA to beat him again. And uh, number one, uh, Most of Illusion? Look, um, Most of Illusion is coming down in class. So he's definitely got to be a big runner. Um, last time he ran in a 61, now it's a 51. And he ran two lengths behind Juniper Lane. He's got the side winkers up. Um, I think he's a, he's a nice horse to factor in for the, the minor placings. And uh, finally, to complete the quartet. Look, I think I was like Don and uh, he's surely got to be mentioned. His form prior uh, is really, really strong. His last run wasn't the best run, but I think he will be making a big uh, improvement. He might have needed that run badly. So he's got draw one. Akesh is riding him. We probably know him quite well. And I think uh, he'll he be running. to lead this race. Yeah, I think he'll be running a nice race. He might just need one more run after this.
So for the win, uh, number five, uh, sea air, and uh, for the placings, uh, number six, uh, swag jagger, number one, uh, monster of illusion, and number four, uh, denan. Yeah. The mother is a uh, racing day cup uh, race uh, seven, uh, which will be run over sixteen hundred meters, a benchmark sixty six, with only four runners. Uh, number one, uh, your pace for mine. Number two, the contractor. Number three, Tower of Wisdom, and number four, a Prince of Venice. Uh, Devon, uh, your pick here. Yeah, look, I'm gonna suppose like number one, your pace for mine. Um, I think this is a smart horse. He ran a really good race last time to Juno Palain. He needed that run and he's gonna definitely run a bigger race now um he's going a little bit further i think uh he's the horse that they'll have to beat and you i think see. the jockey knows him as well 100 percent, and you he can see his his last his last run where he's got the yellow in front and um no sorry he's got the blue and white second apologies nice um he's running a massive race there juniper lane was in front and uh I think you'll be the horse that they will have to beat in this race. For the placings. Yeah, look, for second, I'm tipping a horse like um, Prince of Venice. I tipped him last time behind your pace or mine. So I'm going to mm -hmm. tip him again. He's got no weight on his back, 53 and a half, and uh, he's drawn three. I think he's definitely a horse that uh, can make big, make a big run of it. And uh, if he gets a soft lead, it might be hard for them to beat him. So I'll remind our viewers uh, for the win, uh, number one, uh, your pace or mine. And uh, for uh, the placing of running second, uh, Prince of Venice in a field of four horses on yeah, I think that's that's more than enough to tip. I mean, obviously, I think that's a two-horse race in my opinion. And uh, the main race of the day, the eighth race, uh, the Mother's uh, Day 2023 Cup, uh, which will be run over 1,400 meters uh, with four runners. Again, uh, number one, uh, Frosted Gold. Number two, Aya Sat. Number three, uh, Blackburn Rock. And number four, uh, Fools Gold. Devon, uh, your choice here. I think we can tip one horse and move <laughs> on to the next race. Yeah. yeah I think <laughs> Frosted Gold, definitely the bank of the day. The double for me, Frosted Gold Instinctive Power, I think. That's the double wow. of the century. One I to note. I don't see much beating the two of them. Um, I don't see anything beating Frosted Gold. Derek is riding him. You can see that he's in a really good space. Obviously, we have to tip Earls to run second in the race. So, um, for me, it's going to be hard to even beat him. But uh, to come close to him, I think also like Blackburn Rock. Mm -hmm. He'll definitely come close to him. Uh, well, not close to him, but I mean, he'll definitely he be the horse that will be around second. Yeah. He's in good form. He's re working extremely well. He's got draw one. He ran a good race last time where we can see his run last time was, was a really good run where he won. He beat uh, Hubble. He's sitting second with the yellow. Um, Hubble's in front, who's a known front runner. So he made up a big, made up big run to come back and uh, obviously to win and to win a decent race i mean the time before that we beat fool's gold he won by five lengths mm -hmm. so he is in good form that's just a massive step up for him taking on horse that's one group ones it's won all the classics show well not all of them but he's won a lot of classics so i think it will be very very hard to beat frosted gold but he is a horse that's fitter he's had one run frosted gold hasn't had a run yet so Yes, there's negatives for Frosted Gold not being uh, running, but I think he's just a very, very smart horse. And for me, I think he shouldn't be beaten. I mean, he got beat by a serious horse that day when Walls of Dubrovnik beat him. But going forward, I think he'll continue his good, his good form and continue winning like he was last year. So uh, for the win, uh, number one, uh, Frosted Gold, and uh, running second, uh, Blackburn Rock. That's, that's all for me, yeah. Moving on uh, to race uh, nine uh, now. Look, um, also race nine, very yeah. tough race, eh? 
An open race, uh, the Konokon and Balcony Chocolate Cup uh, with number one, a Moroccan Retreat. Uh, number two, Eurotech. Number three, uh, Better Than The Rest. Number four, a Chapter and Verse. Number five, uh, Crimson God. The number six, uh, Sea Drum. And number seven, uh, Universe Boss. Uh, Devon, uh, your picks here. Look, I'm going to tip off like number one, Moroccan Retreat. I mean, we've got to make mention of Ramana's table. They're in extremely hot form. The rising star of Ramana's table. He's winning extremely well. I mean, Ramana's horses are running well. I mean, mm -hmm. like we mentioned last week, if the stable cat had to run, I'm <laughs> sure that would win as well. Yeah. I think he's in a good space. He's, uh, his whole stable's in a good space. We can see how this horse won last time, a rock and a treat. Um, he's got the yellow cap with the blue and white uh, sitting second, and uh, he just pulls away from the field it looks like he's going to win very easily yeah obviously um he wins a really good race and i think he's going to be a very very nice horse going forward looks like a hat trick's loading 100 percent. i don't see much beating him he's got a good draw of four he's got claim one and a half on um yeah i think he's a really nice horse and uh, for the placings for second i'm tipping number two eurotech um I just like his form. He's been running against really good horses like uh, Christmas Bay and Lemon Drop Shot, Lunification. He's coming down in class heavily. So I think uh, he's definitely got to have a shot. I mean, he went from a 46 to a 31. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think he's definitely got to have a shot uh, for second. And Mango's horses are running extremely well. So yeah, I think he's definitely one that you have to factor in. Biggest danger to Moroccan retreat, in my opinion. And what about uh, last time winner, better than the rest? That was very um, surprising. I didn't expect that to win the way it did. Um, it won a good race. Um, it beat lockdown. It was very unlucky. I mean, he got done quite badly. But Bernard's up. Uh, Bernard, obviously, I don't know if he had the choice of rides, but he got off Moroccan retreat to ride this. So that's also something that we've got to take mention of and take note of. He is our leading jockey at the moment, and he's... Um, his strike rate is impressive it's really really impressive so yeah i think this horse has to have a shot um definitely i wouldn't i wouldn't leave it out of anything because i mean why would bernard get off a horse like moroccan retreat to ride this he's won two on moroccan retreat so most definitely one that we'll have to watch out for and uh, number six uh, c drama who got a uh, wide draw number six uh, and uh, with uh, janish taka on board Look, C. Dram is probably one of the favourites of the day, you know. Um, I think he's second favourite in this race. Mm -hmm. Moroccan Retreat is just more favourite than he is. But um, he's definitely a horse with a big shot. But for me, he's going up in class. Everything else is either staying in the same division or coming down in class. So I think he's definitely got to have a shot. I mean, his form doesn't say much wrong. But better than the rest B team last time. It's going to be much of a muchness between the two of them. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them fight in our third and fourth. So uh, for the win, number one, uh, Moroccan Retreat. Uh, and uh, for the placings, number two, Eurotech, uh, followed by uh, number three, Better Than The Rest. And uh, finally, number six, uh, Seedrum, uh, to complete the quartet. Uh, we now uh, go through the code of the 10th race uh, with eight uh, runners. Number one, uh, Choose on Weight. Number two, Duke's Domain. Number three, Lemon Drop Shot. Number four, Arlington's Revenge. Number five, uh, Freedom of Speech. Number six, Seeds Lizen. Number seven, uh, Coastal of Gloss. And number eight, uh, Taking Silk. Uh, this race uh, will be run over 1600 meters in Benchmark 41. Uh, Devon, uh, which horse you like here for the win? I'm tipping probably the the biggest uh, celebrity horse in Mauritius at the moment. Um, everyone knows him. And the key last time. Castle of Glass. Uh, we don't really have to mention much what <laughs> happened. We just know that the jockey did get a year suspension. Um, there's a reason why he got a year suspension. We can see he ran second yeah, at the 300, I thought. Three four length winner. At the 50, my jaw was on the floor and I couldn't believe he got beat. So, I mean... Yeah, uh, I'm tipping him confidently to win. I think I think he'll win quite well. Derek's on him. Looks like Derek's gonna have a monster day. Maybe another Hall of Famer, hopefully for him. Well, um, right, yeah. I think he he can have a big day today, and uh, he can do it. He looks race over, but for me it looks like it's. Uh, I couldn't believe he got beat that day. So yeah, I mean we did make mention of Eagles Vision second and. 
uh, or third in that race. There was an objection. I do think he's the horse that they, they all have to beat, in my opinion. And uh, number one, uh, Chosen Way, a brilliant win uh, last time out. Uh, this time draw number two in the stores, uh, moving up in close, uh, back of the two month break. Yeah, look, Chosen Way won a really good race last time. Um, he's the talking horse. The whole race course is talking about Chosen Way. He's the favorite in the race. I just purely think the only reason why he won that day was 100% jockey ship, in my opinion. Um, he shouldn't have uh, won. It was all credit to the jockey. The jockey rode a fantastic race, got up on the line to beat one day, day one and straight. The form line's been franked, straight come out and won. I mean, we're waiting to see, obviously, on the day, if one day or day one wins, you can take that into credit and say, look, the form, the on race day form is there. He's definitely the biggest danger to Chosen, I mean, to Castle of Glass. If he's got the same ride that he had that day with, um, that he gets from Donahue on one day or day one, it might be a horse that could win the race. He's got draw to definitely the biggest danger to Castle of Glass, in my opinion. And number six, uh, Sid Slyzen, last time winner. Again, uh, Ben already up on board. Uh, draw number four in the stores, uh, moving up in class and distance. Look, Sid Liaison's win last time was very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anything was beating him that day. Mm -hmm. Even if you had to bring group one horses so that way, he won that day was very, very impressive, you know. So um, his time was really, really fast. And I think, I think he's a nice horse. I'm tipping him to run third purely on that. I think he could be at the biggest danger to them as well it's a tough race um surely it's got to be um a tough race with horses like this but for me i'm tipping him to run third and another last time uh, out uh, winner arlington's uh, revenge uh, draw number one uh, in the stores uh, right draw one on board uh, awesome uh, win uh, last time against uh, castle of glass yeah look he beat castle of glass last time castle of glass was carrying 61 and a half he was carrying 61 now he's carrying 60 and castle of glass is carrying 59 and a half so it's a one kilogram turnaround i think castle of glass could get the better of him i purely feel um i was shocked to see him winning that day so i'm gonna be shocked to see him winning again i'm not tipping him to win i'm tipping him to run fourth so number seven uh, castle of glass uh, for the win and for the blessings number one uh, choose and wait number six uh, sid slyzen and number four arlington's uh, revenge before ending the show, I'm going to ask you about your best bets of the day, Devon. Look, obviously my best bets will come up in race six, number one, Frosted Gold. Mm -hmm. And race seven, number seven, I mean, no, not race seven, sorry. Instinctive, Instinctive Power. Power, yeah. Um, I don't know why I'm saying race seven, but it was Instinctive Power. Mm -hmm. I think he's definitely the horse that they, they all have to beat. And uh, your value bet of the day? Um, I like a horse like in race one i think he's a monster monster price mm -hmm. it's not my value bet for only a win i think he's a is a each way bet number one i mean number three cost uh, after the order definitely at any price i think you're going to get 20 30 to one on him you can take a place bet i think he's really big value and um in race 10 number seven castle of glass i think he's also at uh, at four to one is massive value Massive, massive value. So please uh, take note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, best bets are of Devon uh, in race six. Uh, horse number one, uh, Frosted not, Gold. Um, must, uh, correction, there's not race six, sorry, it's race eight, Frosted Gold. <laughs> sorry. Um, race eight, uh, number one, uh, Frosted Gold. Uh, and uh, race five, uh, horse number, number seven, six. Instinctive number Power. Six. Number six, Instinctive Power. And uh, as a value bet, uh, race number one, uh, horse number three after the order, and in race ten, uh, horse number seven, a uh, castle of glass. Yeah, and look, obviously, the double of the century, instinctive power, frosted gold. I think that's the right one. Um, you can even throw us like arm force in that race. I wow. think uh, he's a really good horse as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you guys are gonna play, try play on the people's tote. You'll get good odds. You get the tote guarantee, and I think. Um, Local and international, that's the place to be playing horses on. So we have What's now... What's uh, your, your best bet, your value bet? My best bet uh, will be in race one, uh, horse number one, uh, greet me. Okay. And also uh, frosted goal uh, in race eight. Uh, and as value bet in race six, uh, horse number four, Dunan. And in race seven, horse number two, the contractor. Look, obviously the contractor is an our source and I think he ran a really good race last time, so... 
definitely some value there. Yeah. So anything more to add, Devon? I don't think so. I just obviously like to say a massive thank you to the media team, um, the staff behind the scenes, obviously People's Toad for giving us the go ahead and the opportunity, uh, People's Turf Place for giving us the opportunity to do the show mm -hmm. and portray our, our tips out to the public, uh, the public for playing with us and um, for supporting us and supporting racing. We can't do it without them. We need the public, Indeed. Um, the jockeys, the trainers, and all the horses that are running for us. Thank you to them. Thank you to the technical team behind the scenes, the Mastan brothers, and uh, really appreciate their hard work. Thank you to you for putting in your time and effort. Thank you. And yeah, let's uh, just hope everyone has a fantastic day racing. It's 10 races, so bet sparingly. Um, it's a better bet to come up later on in the card, I think. You guys can make a lot of money and yeah, good punting <laughs> and I hope we hit them hard. So big thanks uh, to you, uh, Devon, uh, yeah, for your presence and analysis uh, to our viewers and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching uh, race uh, previews as usual. And I will not end this show without uh, making a special uh, mention uh, to our wonderful uh, production team uh, behind the cameras. Uh, hoping to see you tomorrow for a nice uh, racing day at the PTP uh, Champ de Moss. Uh, till then, uh, take care. Bye bye.